Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the So Brothers channel. And today, I'm going to be reviewing the Kairos Mark II, or Kairos. So this is Spencer Dinwiddie's performance basketball shoe. He has his own brand, which is really cool. And this particular shoe is going for 130 bucks. His first model was 110 bucks, so he increased the price by $20. So if you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. But let's get it started off with the traction. This actual pattern looks like a Kyrie 2, which is not a bad thing. The Kyrie 2 is one of the GOAT tractions. And uh, this is up there. So uh, at first, it seemed like it was picking up a little bit of dust, but then as I kept playing in it, as the days went by and I broke it in, actually it doesn't really pick up dust as much anymore, which is interesting, right? So on a clean court, the bite is insane. Like it has a really, really good and hard stop for both moving forward and also on ladder movements, incredible stop. As far as the dust goes, like I said, it got better and it virtually doesn't pick up any dust. Uh, I would say it picks it up a little bit, but like even if it does, it's a really, really easy wipe. So if you ever play on a dusty setting, you're probably good to go. For my first impressions, I speculated that it wasn't gonna be very durable because the lines are very thin, you know? And it's pretty soft, it moves quite easily. I wouldn't say it's the softest rubber I've ever felt, but it's definitely not that hard. It didn't seem durable to me at first, but there's absolutely like no fraying. And compared to like the Adapt BB, it's not like most basketball shoes nowadays, like Nike, Adidas, there's actually a good amount of fraying. So that's good, you know, there's no fraying. And I have no like pieces of rubber like ripped off or anything either, you know, uh, especially on these like really thin and fragile looking parts of rubber, like uh, where the circle is. I, ha I have no ripping off or anything. So durability seems very good. I still wouldn't recommend these for outdoors, but it definitely did surprise me for durability. So this shoe performs very, very well on traction. Also, another thing that I really, really like about the traction is that Spencer added an outsole curvature. So it's definitely not as dramatic as like the Kyrie 2s and the Kyrie 3s. It's a little bit more squared off than that, but it's still like really, really nice. Like if you're doing a lot of crossovers, you know, that type, those types of movements, you have this curvature which allows you to actually go on the side of your foot and have grip here. The rubber actually extends up here into the medial side and you have grip here. So this feels really, really nice and like no other shoes do this besides Kyrie's shoes. So this is definitely a welcome design change. I really, really like it. As far as the heel toe transition goes, it feels very smooth. You have a good amount of heel compression. You have a nice curve shape here in the heel, as well as in the forefoot, and a lot of flex here. So heel to toe transition is buttery smooth, probably the softest that you can get. As far as the cushion goes, they're using chrono foam, and uh, chrono foam is using like a PBAX compound, which is the compound of chemicals that's usually found in like runners, like the Vaporfly. And if you guys have ever tried Nike's running shoes, like the Vaporfly, it's really, really comfortable. Mostly soft though. So the good thing about this cushion is it's very, very comfortable and it's really, really soft. And when I first got it, I was like, whoa, this is, this is insane, right? And then like the first few times I wore it, uh, there were only a couple of times, but then like I felt it being a little unstable and a little bit laggy, you know? Like I didn't feel very, very quick on my feet because the cushion was a little too soft. Even though there's this caging here on the lateral side, you know, here in the heel and in the forefoot, I felt it being a little too soft at very specific instances. This cushion does bottom out pretty quickly, which is a good thing. When I was playing, I felt like it was a little too soft, but then it's still like pretty damn soft. And I would say it's almost the perfect amount of softness for me right now, uh, now that it's more bottomed out. It's kind of crazy because if you remove the insole and you look on the bottom and you look at the strobe board, it's like stiff, but then like I can feel the actual chrono foam underneath my foot like right underneath my heel and also right underneath my forefoot it's actually really soft there's a nice plush compression right underneath the foot and also here in the heel you know the actual midsole compresses as well even though there's a good amount of caging impact protection is insane it's comfortable it's soft i wouldn't say there's a crazy amount of bounce uh, i would say it's more soft pretty similar to boost one thing i don't like as much for the cushion is the court feel the court feel isn't great but it's not horrible, you know, I wouldn't say it's as bad as the LeBron 16 and the LeBron 17, but I wouldn't say it's as good as like the Curry 6 or like the Kyrie's. I would say it's somewhere in between that. Like I said, it wasn't horrible, but I like to have good court feel in my shoes. And also another thing that was kind of annoying and kind of uncomfortable is that like, when I was playing, I can definitely feel this cage, but then it just felt like it was poking out a little bit. All right, moving on to the materials. They're using a full on textile mesh throughout the entire upper. 
and it has kind of like a rubber coating which improves durability uh, it's really thin and soft which I like I like to have a really minimal upper and it conforms to your foot really well it's supportive there's really no stretch to it either to be honest I really really like this material you have a fused toe cap so if you do toe drags you have extra added durability for that and then here in the ankle area and in the tongue you have a neoprene type of material and then there's a little bit of stretch to it I would have liked it to have a little bit more to be honest but you know it's not bad so uh, overall I really really like these materials there's very, very minimal padding as well. Like the tongue doesn't have a lot of padding. The ankle area doesn't have a lot of padding either, but for me, it's adequate. All right, moving on to the fit. I went true to size and it was a perfect fit for me. Uh, lengthwise, my foot is pretty much right there, which I like because I like to have a very tight and snug fit. It's a very snug fit in the toe area. And width wise, I would say it's perfect for me. So it's slightly narrow. And if it is a little too tight and a little too snug for you at first, don't worry because this material does stretch out over time. It stretches out just a little bit. But if you have a wide or a thick foot, or you don't like to have a snug fit at all, probably go up half a size or maybe even the full size. But for me, it was perfect. One thing that I would change about this is that, you, you know, it, it definitely got easier to put on. This is a one booty upper, right? But it doesn't stretch out as much as I would like. You know, it's still pretty damn hard to put my foot in this shoe. Maybe they can have this open up a little bit more or have it a little bit stretchier. I don't know. But that's just one little thing. It's still pretty damn hard for me to put it on. As far as the support and lockdown goes, I, it was really good in this shoe, which is interesting because I, I didn't think it was going to be good. Like for lateral containment, like there's nothing here. There's no lateral cage. There's no midsole coming up. There's no rubber coming up or anything. It's basically just this material. And I guess this material is supportive enough. It gets a little bit thicker here as well. I'm guessing there's something underneath here. Like if you feel it, uh, there's another material underneath here, which is good. So I had no lateral containment issues. As far as lateral stability goes, that was good as well. There's a lateral outrigger here, which helps to keep you laterally stable. And you have a triangle cage here in the heel and in the forefoot. And if these weren't here, this soft cushion, because it is really, really soft, would compress and you would get this type of motion. And the cage helps to keep the cushion like not too soft on this side. So surprisingly, supporting lockdown, I had no issues in the shoe. All right, moving on to the weight. I believe this was, yeah, 11.08 ounces and the left pair is 10.97. So very, very light. It feels really light. It feels very responsive as well. Like I said, when I first got it, the cushion felt a little too soft, so I didn't feel like very quick on my feet. But now that it's more bottomed out, I feel very, very light on my feet. Like the traction is incredible. The material on the upper is really, really thin, minimal padding and all that. So the weight made the shoe very, very enjoyable for me to play in. As far as the stepping comfort goes, is it a very comfortable shoe to walk around in casually? And I would say yes, the material is very comfortable and soft and the cushion is really, really comfortable and soft as well. So you will have no problems walking around in this all day. Durability, I feel like it'll be good. Like I said, the rubber seems very durable and the upper seems very durable as well. It doesn't seem flimsy. It doesn't seem like it'll rip very quickly either, like in the Zoom Freak ones. Ventilation on this shoe was pretty good. Um, I, I feel like the materials wick away the moisture pretty well and it's a really thin material too. You don't really feel any type of active ventilation or air going to the actual material or anything, but you know, it, my foot wasn't incredibly hot in the shoe. As far as the aesthetics go, I mean, this shoe definitely grew on me. At first I was like, eh, it, it looks kind of weird. It looks a little cheap kind of, you know? It definitely grew on me and there's some really cool colorways, like the graffiti colorway is really cool. And then the uh, black and kind of like, it looks kind of like gum, but not really. It's more on the red hue side for the outsole, but that, that color is still dope as well. So in my opinion, the aesthetics are pretty nice. Tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. But wrapping things up, 130 bucks, really, really nice shoe. I was very surprised. Um, like I took these to the court and I was like, ooh, these are pretty damn nice, but it's a little too soft. And then as I got to keep playing in it, it kept getting better and better because like I said, the cushion was a little too soft and now it's not. You know, traction is incredible. I love this outsole curvature. The cushion is really, really nice, soft. I would have liked a little bit more bounce, but it's okay. Materials are thin soft, comfortable on foot, no issues with support or anything. It was a perfect fit for me. 
So it's a top performer. Like this will definitely be in my rotation with like the PG fours and like the Jordan Jumpman that I made, the Jordan 34, you know, all those shoes. Uh, it'll definitely be in that rotation. And I would say pretty tightly as well, not loosely, but pretty tightly. I really like playing this. So shout out to Spencer Dinwiddie. He did a really good job on designing it, not only for looks, but also for performance. So I definitely approve of this shoe. So again, if you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.